Thank you for choosing Yaystar. This video will provide you with a tutorial on how to do the hardware installation for our Yaystar P-Series PBX properly. We're going to present the process step by step. For P-Series PBX, we have three models. P550, P560, and P570. For this video, we will take a standard P570 as an example. Usually, when we have a brand new factory equipment, the first thing we're supposed to do is to check the package contents and make sure that we've received all the items. If there's any problem, contact the equipment provider. Open the carton, and we should find a P570 appliance, an Ethernet cable, a power cord, two rack mounting kits and screws, four rubber feet, one grounding stud and nut, one warranty card, HDD fixed screws, the disc locked bracket is only available on P560 and P570. The system capacity of P Series PBX is scalable with its modular design. In other words, we can install different modules on the PBX to expand features. One S2 module provides two FXS ports. One O2 module provides two FXO ports. On a 2G, 3G, or 4G LTE module, we can install the same card as a trunk. One SO module offers an FXO port and an FXS port. One B2 module offers two BRI interfaces. All these modules can be inserted on an EX08 expansion board. Each unit of EX08 expansion board has four slots on which we can install modules. Each slot is connected to two RG11 ports on the front panel. As for the EX30 expansion board, it can provide an E1, T1, or J1 interface. D30, if we install it on the PBX, we can expand 100 users and 30 concurrent costs additionally. Yet mind that the expansion board in D30 can be installed on P560 and P570 only. If we have bought some modules, please open the package and check if the module pins are bent or broken, and the number of all modules. We'll also have an antenna if we have bought a 4G LTE module. If we purchase one piece of D30, we will also receive accessories of screws and a screwdriver. Having checked the PBX and all accessories, we can start installing the expansion board and modules. Make sure to keep the power unplugged during the whole installation process. Otherwise, there might be a risk of electric shock. Please be cautious about that. On the front panel of P570, there's an NFC chip behind the Yaystar logo, which allows us to tap NFC capable mobiles back against it to quickly configure network settings. Please check the length of video for a detailed operation process. There are two empty boards. We can take off their covers and insert two expansion boards, while there's only one expansion board supported on P560. Turn to the back panel, there are some ports and LED indicators. From left to right, they are, respectively, Reset button, which can reset the system to factory settings when pressed. Power indicator, system indicator, SD slot, USB slot, WAN port, LAN port, console port, six antenna sockets, power switch, power inlet, and protective earth. Then, remove the upper cover, loosen the screws on the enclosure, push and release the cover. Now it's taken off. We can see the inside structure. There's a heat sink, motherboard, HDD bracket, and power supply. The HDD bracket is available on both P560 and P570. We can insert a hard disk to expand the storage space. Next. Let's see how to insert the EX08 expansion board. Push out the empty board. Push in the EX08. The board must match the slot in the motherboard. Lock out the four screws. By the way, inserting an EX30 expansion board is the same way. Now let's move on to the installation of modules on EX08 expansion board. 
The installation method for every single piece of the module is the same, even each module carries different quantity of pins. The function of each port depends on which module we have installed in the slot. Take 4G LTE module as an example. First, insert the same card. Loosen and raise the cover. Insert that same card. Put the cover down and push it lock. Adjust its direction according to the number of pins on each side while installing the module to the slot. Match the slot. Press the module vertically with average strength on each hand. Tips. It's not allowed to insert or pull out the module in a tilt angle. Otherwise, the module's pin will be bent or broken. Next step. Connect an antenna to the 4G LTE module. Take off the plug. Connect the cable to the module. And fix the antenna. Yet the installation of D30 is different. The module should be installed into the D slot on the motherboard. On P570, there are two D slots. While on P560, there is only one. When we install the D30, please remember to turn its front side upwards, insert the module from a tilt angle, and then press it down. Lock the screws to fix the module. We've finished our installation of an EX080 expansion board, a 4G LTE module, and a D30. Next, connect the ground. Attention please! Proper grounding is critical to reduce the risk of electric shock or protect the PBX from the harmful effects of external noise in a lightning strike. A permanent connection between ground and the ground terminal of the PBX must be built. Tighten the provided screw stud into the ground port. Connect an 18 AWG grounding wire. Tighten the provided screw nut and attach the grounding wire to the grounding terminal. That's it. Please note that the grounding wire and the grounding terminal need to be prepared by ourselves. The last step, close the cover and fix all the screws. After the installation, now we can round the equipment. Please make sure the upper cover has been fixed before switching on the power. If we want to remove the cover, please remember to turn off the power first. Otherwise, it may cause an electric shock. Plug the provided power cord into the PBX power inlet and the other end to a standard electrical wall socket. Make sure proper power has been offered to the PBX so that it will work normally. Back to the PBX. We can check the status of the LED indicators on the back panel to see whether the equipment is running normally. The power LED indicator is static green. If the light is off, it means the equipment isn't running at all. The system LED indicator. If it's blinking green, the system works correctly. If it's static green or it turns off, there must be something wrong with the system. The LED indicators of WAN port and the LAN port are usually off. If connected to a network at 1000 megabits per second, the light will turn static green. If connected to network at 10 to 100 megabits per second, the light will turn static orange. We can see if modules installed are running normally by checking the status of the LED indicators on the front panel. Once we switch on the power, all LED indicators will turn orange for a few seconds, and then black out for a few seconds as well. The system can start working normally when indicators turn to a color that depends on the installed module. As we've mentioned, the 4G LTE module is installed in the slot 1, so the corresponding interfaces are port 1 and port 2. Normally, the indicator of port 1 is static red, and port 2 is off. If port 1 blinks slowly in red, it says there's no SIM card inserted in this module. If we have installed the S2 module, the two indicators are green. If it's the O2 module, the indicators are blinking slowly in red. When connected to a PST on landline, the light will turn static red. If it's ASO module, port 7 is FXS port, while port 8 is FXO port. 
So port 7 is static green, while port 8 is blinking slowly in red. If it's B2 module, the indicators are blinking slowly in orange. When connected to BRI truck, the lights will turn static orange. If all the indicators are out of working all the time, it means all the modules haven't been started correctly. We need troubleshooting. If all the LED indicators are working normally, we can log in and start configuration. That was all we have for Yaystar P-Series PBX Basic installation. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Check our linked videos for more details of system configuration. For more Yaystar updates, visit our website www.yaystar.com or follow our social media.